Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.5 and DECA Ironwork Simulations JF17 Thunder. This is tutorial 1, Startup. Today we're going to take a look at this interesting new aircraft in DCS. Uh, in fact, it's the most modern aircraft available in DCS, having only entered service in 2010 with the Pakistani Air Force. Uh, it's an interesting, you know, kind of modern, light, low-cost, multi-role jet. Fills kind of the same uh, niche as the F-16, I would say. You know, single-engine uh, multi-role quite capable. This aircraft is considerably more modern, uh, although at the same time it's uh, a bit cheaper, so it's perhaps slightly less capable in certain roles. However, let's get into the office and get started with the startup. I'm going to cover this in sections as I normally do, and the very first thing we're going to do is establish power. So we can do that by turning on the battery, AC generator, DC generator, and we're then going to turn on the external lights so the ground crew know that we're about to start up. So, external lights are here. External master switch to normal. We're going to put position lights on bright and leave them on steady. Formation lights to maximum brightness. Uh, Anti-collision code to one and anti-collision to on. And with that done, actually we'll jump outside first so you can see the lights. They're all modern LED lights and pretty bright. And we've got the anti-collision flashing so that uh, the ground crew know we're about to do something. Uh, next I'm going to do is set up the audio. So for that we go intercom to on position. Com 1, full volume. Com 2, full volume. TACAN and ILS, I'll just turn up a bit. And missile, this is also our master caution for uh, bitching Betty and so on. Well, that'll go to full. Actually, maybe not full. Yeah, there we go. So she's a little bit quieter. And with that turned up, I'm actually going to go up here and cancel the master warning so that we don't have to listen to that anymore. Also down here, we're going to power up our standard systems. Uh, the avionics are all powered on using push buttons on this panel here, although there are presets for combat, training, and off. For today's mission, we're going to go training preset, and it will automatically power on the systems that we need for training. Now, if we look forwards, we'll see that our displays are now on, uh, but we're going to want to turn up the HUD brightness here, and that will activate the HUD. Let's give it a few moments to pop up. There it is, it's coming on. And UFC brightness similarly will bring up the UFC. We now have our displays. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to push our T1 switch on our HOTAS into the middle position. And that gives us navigation preset or navigation master mode that automatically sets up our displays for us. Next thing we're going to do is actually start the engine. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to close the canopy. That's controlled using this lever here. One push forwards, and the canopy will come down. Just like that. Another push forwards will pressurize. And we now have pressurization. So, now if we look down at the left-hand console, we're going to go uh, start pump to on, engine controls to on, we're going to bring the throttle out of cutoff and into the uh, idle detent. And then, uh, I'm actually going to zoom out a little so I can see the engine instruments. We're going to monitor the engine instruments here on the lower part of the left MFD. We're going to push and hold the ground start push button for four seconds. And we should then see the start begins. Uh, we're waiting for it to idle at 70%. Okay, up it comes. It uses a, a jet fuel starter, much like the F-16 does. Is it coming up nicely? Uh, RPM climbing, like I said, that should stabilize around about 70%. And it has done so. 
That's good, good engine start, and then straight away we want to put our ECS into normal. That will enable the normal avionics cooling, because until we do that our avionics are just getting hotter and hotter, and eventually they're going to cut out on us. Uh, great, okie dokie. So M N2 has reached 70%, ECS is in normal. We're now, begin we're now going to begin the uh, Shars Align. So this aircraft is a little bit unusual in that its attitude and heading reference system is completely separate from its INS. Uh, and kind of positional navigational system. So uh, we're going to turn on Shars. Uh, that's actually a switch all the way at the back here. So Shars to on. And we should then notice that on our EFIS, which is on the left hand side here, after a few moments we'll get flashing Shars align. And that uh, lets us know the system is starting up. You'll notice there are no pitch ladder indications on the EFIS just now. Uh, that's because Shars is not running. Also same on the HUD, there's no pitch ladder. We'll know that we're fully aligned because that uh, message will go away and the pitch ladder will appear. Also while we're down here, let's turn on the radio. I'm going to put it into uh, transmit, receive and ground and make sure the volume is all the way up, and it is. You normally control the uh, radio from the UFC, uh, but it's nice to have the, the backup head set up as well. I'm actually just going to hide the uh, stick as well just now. Okay, next part of the setup that we're going to do is the INS Align. To do the INS Align, um, basically we want to configure Waypoint 00, zero because Waypoint 00, zero is current position information, and that will be used for the alignment of the system. So with Waypoint 00, zero selected, we can press Destination. It's going to display the coordinates for that. If I bring up my kneeboard, we have confirmation of our starting position information used for INS alignment. We can select the northing by pressing this arrow and we type it in exactly as shown on the kneeboard. So three, four, three, five, zero, four, eight. And then we press the line select again and that enters those details. Now we'll press our easting. That is gonna be zero, three, two, five, nine, four, nine, eight and then press the line select. And then the last one we need to do is our altitude. We don't press the left hand side because that's for changing it between positive and negative. We press the right hand side here and we enter it exactly as shown here. So zero, 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 seven, seven, enter. Okay, so uh, that's the, the INS initial position set. We can now, there are two different ways of us doing the alignment. We've got our uh, INS master switch here. We can put it into fast alignment and then once it aligns, put it into nav, or we can just put it straight into nav mode, because what it will do in that case is it will actually do the alignment and then switch the mode automatically when the time comes. Uh, and actually, I want to monitor that, so I'm going to go menu, INS, we can see this here, and we're going to do a stored heading alignment, so we can press uh, the heading, and the heading is found here on the kneeboard as well, so it's 0, 3, 9. It's much, much faster to do an alignment with the stored heading than it is to leave it out. If you leave it out after a certain period of time, it'll do a normal alignment, though. Okay, we're now going to get our seat all set up, and you can see here there's a caption here that says align. Uh, so if I look down the left-hand side of my seat, I can connect my oxygen hose, I can connect my G-suit, uh, I can turn the oxygen valve all the way on, and then I want to unsafe my seat. So I flip down this armed indicator and then I pull the pin out of the ejection seat handle and you'll now see that there are no warnings on the master warning page there. And just as I said, that INS went into nav mode. That's us fully aligned. Uh, and if I actually go, oops, if I go on the left uh, multifunction display menu and EFIS, we'll see that the SHARS is fully set up as well. Next thing we're going to do is set our baro, uh, barometric uh, pressure. Uh, I'm just going to set it for QFE. We can currently see that our altimeter is indicating 441. We have this knob here that we can turn. I'm going to turn it until I get airfield elevation just for now. So I want that to be around about 1 or 0. That's close enough. Um, and it confirms to us. Uh, actually, where does it confirm that again? I don't remember. Hmm. 
Oh, down here, actually, on the EFIS. 29.44 inches of mercury. Cool, so that's now set. Uh, next thing we're going to do is load the DTC. The, the GF-17 is unusual uh, in DCS in that it actually has a partial simulation of the data cartridge. So, um, if we're loading the same weapons that we started the mission with, you don't need to do anything special. However, if you change your loadout at any point, you need to speak to the ground crew and you need to tell them to update the DTC data. So remember that you need to do that. Uh, in our case, we don't need to do that uh, because we're using the same weapons that the aircraft started with. So around the back here is the DTC cartridge slot. You're gonna click there to put the cartridge in place and click again to insert it. Cartridge is now down and locked. Whenever the cartridge is inserted, the left multifunction display will automatically display the DTC page. We have the option of selecting individual information that we want to load into the aircraft, or we can choose all and then press enter. And that's gonna begin loading all of our information into the system. So uh, nav information is gonna be your waypoints and such like. SMS is gonna be all of your weapon information. Uh, CNI is for navigational information. I'm gonna cancel out master caution. Approach data and OAP. So I'm waiting for it to finish loading everything. You see that it's been populating data on my horizontal situation uh, display. And once that DTC is finished, it's gonna say DTC locked. So at that stage, I'm gonna bring the EFIS back up. And then down here, I'm gonna bring up the radar, uh, which is currently off. Cool, okay, we now have a warning about config. Now the reason for that is this aircraft has a, a flight a control system limiter, just like in the F-16, and it's manually set. So if we look down at the left-hand side here, you, oops, you'll see that we have settings for air-to-air -air or air-to-ground, and an air-to-ground has two different profiles, one and two. Today, I think we're air-to-ground profile one. Let me just check. No, we're not, it still says config, okay. We're obviously air-to-ground profile two. And the warning light goes out. Once we've got that, we know that we have the correct profile selected. Uh, and I'm going to select some internal lighting just now. I'm going to put my instruments and consoles at full brightness. And we now are fully configured. The aircraft will be ready for taxi. Let's just have a quick external uh, inspection. That's looking pretty good. Today we're just carrying the PL5, which is basically a, a sidewinder, uh, two external fuel tanks, and the WMD targeting pod, which is the standard targeting pod used by this aircraft. I'm gonna press return on my UFC, and that puts me back into the main screen, and I could even just now go 01 for waypoint 01, and immediately I get my steering information for that. Excellent, okay. So that is the full procedure for starting up a GF-17. I hope that you all found that very useful. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. And I'll see you all next time.